Today's episode is made possible through the continuing support of Michael Loftus and dozens of other people on Patreon just like you. If you like what you see and you want to be a part of it, check out the links below in the description and see how you can get involved. Thank you. Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop for Project Archie episode 41, where today we're going to be doing the power connections to the J1 limit switch. This one, quick and easy. We still got our setup from before where we've got that retracted, so we got tons of room. Nothing to this. This is, this is one of those nice, quick, easy videos. Pop that off. Pop that off so we got our actual wires stripped down off to the switch itself. And these are nice, feels like about an 18 gauge silicone wire. I really like working with silicone wire. For stuff like this, the, the fine strand silicone wire, it's so easy to work with. It's just, it just works. So we've got our black and red, that's our positive and negative there. Now we're gonna get into the main power bus bundles for the five volt bus. We're gonna strip these. These are a little tricky because they're so short, but you'll thank me years from now when you're working on some other project. Wow, I stripped that one long. I don't know how I did that, but okay. It's really cool to strip it so long in here because I got so much wire length to work with. I'm not going to regret that later at all. It's, you got to make sure you hit the bump stop. There we go. That's, that's a much more appropriate length. That first one's just indecent. It's all right to be a little long though. Got me through high school. All right, so we've got those sorted out. Let's grab some heat shrink. We're going to... We're gonna go down to, now we've, I'm just gonna dig a bunch of this out and set it over there. And grab one red and one black. Okay, so I got a red, I got a black. Life is good. I'm gonna put them up these. I'm gonna cut these down to half their length. Well, I would if I could find my, hey, I got my new Hakko cutters. Okay, we're using these. I'm cutting these down to half their length because they're long enough to give me all the protection I need in here. And I'm gonna do that overbanding thing anyway because it looks so good. Let's grab a piece of white. Does it need to be that big? Will you do? Oh, it's close. I don't know if that's too small or not. Yeah, it'll be okay. I think that's all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this blue piece up both, and I'm gonna try to do that really sexy double banding thing that I did before because that looks so good. That really made me happy. So we're going to put the black one up there and just slide it up inside it a bit to get me that extra little bit of space because why not? And we're going to put a red one on here. I like this one better. Oh, I don't have the real estate. I can't do that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I can. Oh, some days I'm sharp as a marble. All right, I can actually run this up. Can I? Can I do that? I think I can. And if I, oh, look at that. <laughs> okay, uh, I need to push that up the thing from back here, tease it out a little bit. And that just got me halfway up the thing. And now I can do that and then grab my big tweezers, shut way up, 
clamp that on there and now that'll hold the whole thing out of the way. I got all kinds of room. And if you can't do this or you don't want to do this, that's okay. I'm just, I'm trying to show some interesting techniques, show a little extra craftsmanship. I just, I want to make it as nice as I can. Because there's been plenty of instances in here where I've just absolutely butchered some particular step in the process. So if I can put a lot of extra nice little bits in here, Maybe it'll kind of hide some of the really ugly ones. Also, it gives me an opportunity to teach you guys a little bit, a new thing, and that's what this is all about. This, is, this video series is not just about building a robot. This video series is very much about learning basic shop skills, learning how to solve problems and think through stuff, and learning how to just be better in the shop because a lot of the people, a lot of the people who watch my videos are uh, engineering students, like college engineering students. And I have learned that while they do teach you engineering in college, they don't actually teach you how to build shit. So I'm trying to help out a lot of the people out there who want to learn how to make things. They want to learn how to build stuff. And I don't have all the answers. But the cool thing is, I'm not the only guy on the internet making videos like this. There's there's smart people like AVE and this old Tony and A-Bomb and, and all kinds of guys. All kinds of guys. And if you watch all of our videos, you might actually learn some stuff. Because I'll teach you a couple things, and AVE will teach you a couple things. And this old Tony, he's wicked smart. And... Uh, I'm making a mess. You put them all together and you got a pretty good set of teachers out there. All right, so we're fluxed. We had some heat. We had some solder. Oh, look at that. This comes right together. Beautiful. Now we'll do this one. Flow it all right in there beautifully. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to just let that cool for a minute. It doesn't take long. And then once it's cool, we just run our heat shrink right the way down for the two short pieces and just entomb those. So comment in if you know, because I really don't know much about soldering. I'm just, I'm just really starting to learn soldering, but I'm enjoying it. I really, soldering has been an excellent skill for me to learn, and I absolutely suggest you learn it. You can even learn a couple things about it watching the Kids with Chris series on this channel. But should I clean the joint off after I solder it, or is that fine? And if I should clean it off, why? And what should I clean it off with? Because I know with circuit boards, Ned, it's a good idea to clean it, but with the electrical stuff like this, I don't know so much. So look at that, shrink in beautifully, nice and tight. We'll get this one. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, so now we take our clamp off and we pull that out of there and I'm going to pull that out by sliding the whole thing down, pinching the tube and then sliding that up because whenever you're working with the sleeving, you always want to be pushing. Just doesn't want to be jerked around. All right, so we're going to slide this down over the two. Oh yeah, I like that. See, this is kind of tangled up over here, but I think that's just, we just got to live with that. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit because I don't want to clamp those any closer than I need to. There we go. That's, 
That's a start of black. And we're gonna run just down there. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna add some heat and shrink all that together. Super clean, super efficient. That's great. Careful with your heat gun, it uh, affects the tubing. All right, we are good. And now J1 is totally connected and I'm gonna pull this whole assembly back because I wanna, J1 doesn't move, like it's, it's rigidly in place there, but I don't wanna have stress on that cable. And if I can pull that back enough where I'm not stressing this, I'm not stressing that, no stress, just chill out, man. We're good, we got all that sorted. That's clean, that's nice. That's the J1 limit switch, completely wired. We did the signal in the last video. In this video, we did the power. It's totally cool. And you've accomplished another step on your robot. Thank you for hanging out with me today. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.